I remember when EGM staff used to reference dual heroes as the apex of shady N64 fighters, or was that Deadly Arts? I think it might have been Deadly Arts, since it got a 1-ish and Dual Heroes scored a little more than... Oh, no, I think I got Deadly Arts somewhere. I'll be going now. Goodbye, cruel world. Deadly Arts, released in 1998 for the Nintendo 64 video game system, courtesy of renowned pachinko machine creators Konami, is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game of the 3D polygonal persuasion, similar to some of the notable heavy hitters of the time such as Tekken, Virtua Fighter, and WCW Nitro. Wait. Deadly Arts also has the reputation, for better or worse, of being one of the worst fighting games to grace the Nintendo 64, which says something considering the N64 is not exactly a haven of quality fighters. And while the game has its share of fans, for the most part, the general reception I've been getting is less than stellar. Unfortunately for those expecting another scathing review calling this game the apex of shitty N64 fighting games, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to disappoint you there because I don't believe Deadly Arts to be one of the worst fighting games ever conceived on the Nintendo 64, especially since I've played Dual Heroes and... The less said, the better. Now is Deadly Arts this horribly misunderstood masterpiece that maybe people didn't get a fair shake to? Not really, no. If anything, Deadly Arts falls well within the realm of below average forgettable stuff, but at the very least I could sit down and say that Deadly Arts functions the way a fighting game would function, which is faint praise at best, but hey, it's something. Now let's get some preliminaries out of the way. Deadly Arts gives you 9 playable characters to choose from, each with a variety of chain combos and special moves that can be executed with various button commands and the like. There's also 2 boss characters as well as the ability to create your own custom fighter. Aside from the typical single player battle aka arcade mode and two player versus modes, the game also featured team battle modes where you pit a team of three fighters against another team of three fighters and tag out as needed. There's also the practice mode to practice your moves and the training mode where, after creating your own custom fighter, you get to partake in many bouts to eventually learn moves for your fighter to use in battle. Once you've fully trained your fighter, you can take him or her into the other modes and ply your trade there. Now here's the kicker. Deadly Arts plays somewhat like a fighting game, I know, it's amazing. You have punch and kick buttons, buttons for guarding and evading, holding one of the C buttons allows you to sidestep around the arena and there's also a button for taunting. You could press up to jump, you could press down to crouch, two buttons throw and stuff. When you pause the game you can access a move list that details all the attacks at your disposal, and in a true show of innovation, Deadly Arts uses the directional pad to move your fighter around rather than the analog stick which is already a thumbs up in my book, especially compared to the abysmal dual heroes. Deadly Arts also features stages with destructible elements, using random objects like tables, shelves, or gates, but sometimes you can take down walls that reveals additional terrain to fight on. It's a nice little touch that doesn't add a whole lot to the overall package, but it's a little something you notice here and there. Now Deadly Arts features a variety of game modes, but it's not much in terms of variety. You have your arcade mode, your versus mode, and you have your team mode, which essentially gives you a team of three fighters that you could pit against another team of three fighters. And, you know, it's all right. Nothing special. But one of Deadly Art's more intriguing features is the create a fighter mode, which essentially allows you to create your own custom fighter. This was something of a novel concept for the time, and certainly something that was starting to become a somewhat standard feature of various pro wrestling titles of the time. But unfortunately, Deadly Art's own offering allows very little in terms of customization, with only a handful of costumes and hair options per gender. And once you create your physical model, you'll have to train him or her in order to learn moves, typically done by winning fights. The training process seemingly lasts forever and it takes a good long while before you're able to learn new moves. It's an interesting mechanic if you're willing to stick with it, but ultimately it feels pointless, especially since the game only allows your custom fighter to participate in the other game modes once you've fully trained your creation and who knows how long that's going to take. When you get down to it, the whole process feels laborious and superfluous and you're just better off sticking with the pre-existing roster instead. For what it's worth, Deadly Art's control scheme is functional and fairly responsive for the most part. 
Executing special moves, whether they be the dial -a combo variety or the quarter circle styles, work fairly well, but there will be occasions where there'll be a missed move or two, but fortunately your basic control functions work well enough that you could probably make do with a quick punch and or kick barrages. In any case, the game provides you with a move list, so you're not completely lost in the fold. If you want to know how to do a certain character's moves, you just pause the game and you can bring up the moves list and you could do it just fine. In any event, the combat is relatively tame, straightforward, and almost consistent in a somewhat cookie cutter fashion with the atypical 3D fighting game of the era. Save for the destructible bits in the various stages that add to the variety but not much else. The balance and difficulty is somewhat spotty. Some characters will prove to be a literal pushover while others will put up a bit more of a fight regardless of when you encounter them, whether it be the first round or the last round. But as with any game, once you learn the patterns and apply the appropriate strategies, whatever that may entail, you shouldn't have too much of an issue. Unfortunately, blowing through all these fighters lack anything resembling variety in terms of attacks and stuff. I found fighters to be somewhat bland and their movesets far from unique enough to be interesting. With the general feeling being that if you played one fighter, you pretty much play them all. Hell, just the fact that beating the final boss nets you the end credits and nothing more takes away whatever replay value that might increase Deadly Art's stock. Graphically speaking, Deadly Arts will definitely not wow you with its less than stellar visuals. Never mind the somewhat blurry nature of the various textures and the overall aesthetics of the game, what you're given in Deadly Arts is a world that comprises a number of generically mundane looking anime stereotypes with awkward animations and uninspired motions, fighting in battle arenas that, while possessing lots of destructible elements, are rather bland, equally generic looking locales that seem like stock settings for a generic fighting game. The generic snowfield, the generic boxing ring, the generic industrial area. The only worthwhile graphical effect here is the various collapsing buildings in that one secret stage and, well I suppose I could bring up the uh, transformation effects of the final boss, I kinda dug that, but otherwise, Deadly Arts is typical 3D blandness on a Nintendo 64, and that blandness is almost certainly bound to include some blurry elements that makes the game no more appealing, visually speaking, than the lowliest polygon game on the Sega 32X. If nothing else, they could at least fix the animation where the characters are speaking, except there's no voices to accompany the moving mouths. Just saying. Likewise, sound in Deadly Arts is also less than inspired. You have your usual sound effects for punching, kicking, impact blows, and that sort of thing. They sound okay-ish for whatever that's worth. There are some voice bites, but they're brief and really mean nothing in the long term. Like I said before, when characters do their victory poses, sometimes they will move their mouths as if they're speaking, but no voices will come out of them which is a, something of a glaring issue. The music in Deadly Arts is also fairly generic. Not so bad that you'll want to rip your ears off or anything like that, but not good enough to be considered memorable or catchy, it's just sort of there. Overall, Deadly Arts for the Nintendo 64 actually surprised me, as I went into this expecting a fighting game that somehow surpassed the suck factor of dual heroes, and I ended up with a fairly competent yet otherwise unremarkable fighting game. If you could look past the blurry generic visuals and the equally average sound, you'll find a fighting game that is content to be a fighting game and not much else to it. It feels like Konami was merely content to bring a fighting game over to a console that was seemingly in desperate need of one, and it really doesn't matter if the game delivered was any good or worth one's time, it's just filling a void in the N64 library that needed to be filled, for whatever that's worth. Hence, if you want a fighting game on N64 that works, Deadly Arts will supply that. It's not the prettiest game, or the most refined fighting game, or a must-have by any means, but it is a functional fighting game, and for our Lark Among Friends, it's adequate but not much else. Not quite terrible, but not terribly impressive. It's just sort of there.